you okay? Who put this stupid swamp here anyway? Not me. The great eastern mud belly is most comfortable in wetland areas. Nothing could be comfortable here. It's a swamp. The mud belly is a grouchy creature. <laughs> Look at that. He cleans up pretty well. Nice. I have a question for you guys. What is a wetland? Duh, it's land that's wet. And muddy. Exactly. Well, let me show you something. A wetland is like this big sponge. Ew, you mean it cleans toilets? No, not this sponge. No, I think she means that a sponge can hold a lot of water. Right, but Connor's right too because wetlands filter and clean the water. They clean out phosphates and heavy metals and other contaminants too. And they also help control water flow. So when there's a lot of water from rain and snow, wetlands soak it up and hold it. Right, just like this. And when there's not a lot of water, wetlands release it into the environment. Right, and that's important, especially after dry spells. There sure does seem to be a lot going on here. What do you mean? Well, we've only been here for a little while, and we've seen all kinds of wildlife. Muskrat, turtles, fish, beavers, dragonflies, butterflies. Oh, look, over there on the cattail. It's a wetland site you can always count on with a call like no other. It's a red-winged blackbird named for the male's bright red shoulders called epaulettes, which he can hide or show off in a dazzling display. The female red-winged blackbird looks very different, often mistaken for a large sparrow. Males migrate separately from females, arriving at breeding areas weeks in advance, and is one of the first signs of spring. In the summer, red-winged blackbirds nest and breed in wetlands across Canada. They defend their territory fiercely, attacking much larger animals to protect their nests. Connor, this morning you said nothing could be comfortable here. Okay, I admit, I was wrong. Just because wetlands aren't cozy for us, it doesn't mean that they aren't ideal homes for tons of other living things, including some really big ones. Weighing up to 600 kilograms, the moose is the largest member of the deer family. They range from the Yukon and British Columbia to Newfoundland and Labrador. Moose love Canada's wetlands, particularly in the summer. They're excellent swimmers and can dive more than five meters to reach lush underwater plants. On land, they're just as skilled. In fact, moose can run faster than horses. Their speed and power come in handy against predators, mostly bears and wolves, who prey heavily on calves during the first few weeks of life. In many parts of Canada, it's not unusual to encounter moose on rural roads. Although they don't have claws or sharp teeth, moose can be aggressive during mating season in the fall or if you come between a cow and her calf in the spring. With all this wildlife here, it reminds me of this thing we're studying in science, biodiversity. We're studying that too. It's about the importance of having lots of different kinds of living things. Yeah, and that a healthy environment is one with a variety of plant and animal species. So this wetland ecosystem is a great example of diversity. It's kind of like a wildlife city. Huh? Well, cities have a lot of people from different cultures. This wetland is full of all kinds of life. It's true. You can't take a step here without finding some different type of plant or animal. And a wetland always has water, right? Can you think of any major city in Canada that's not on a river or lake or ocean? I can't. Wetlands are a lot like cities. They're very complex habitats. But you know, they're surprisingly sensitive. Yeah, well, I still think they're kind of ugly. My uncle says the only thing they're good for is breeding mosquitoes. Now it's time for Hutu Mythbusters. What have we got this time, Jody? Today's myth, wetlands breed only mosquitoes. Ha, 
Busting that old myth will be easy. Wetlands are one of nature's most important nurseries, the breeding site for many species that actually eat mosquitoes, including frogs, fish, and birds. The fact is that mosquitoes are more likely to breed in standing water, like ditches, puddles, and even backyard bird baths. So, if you want to reduce the number of mosquitoes in your community, protect your wetlands. You know, that really makes sense, in a weird kind of way. Well, just because you can't skateboard on a wetland doesn't mean it's not valuable. And that's one of the problems with wetlands. People think they're not good for anything. Yeah, well, most people are probably a lot like me. They don't know a whole lot about wetlands or how important they are. Connor, you know a lot more than you think. Let's check and see. It's time to test your wildlife knowledge on wetland wizards. Can you check your buzzer, Connor? Make sure it's working. And Jenny, yours too? First skill testing question. Which one of these animals doesn't belong in wetlands? Fox, beaver, osprey, or snake? Fox. I'm sorry, that is not correct. Jenny? That is a trick question. All those animals are found in wetlands. Correct! Next. Name the continents that do not have wetlands. Jenny? Uh, uh, Antarctica? Uh... Connor? Another trick question. Wetlands can be found on all continents, even Antarctica. Well done! Okay, Connor. One more question to break the tie. How many different kinds of wetlands are there? Six. No, no, two. Ten. Eight. Sixty-two. Five. Right. Five. What are they? Hey, you still have one more question. Yeah, but it's got two parts. What are the different types of wetlands? Uh, round, oval, big, small, and ginormous. <laughs> what? That's five. Jenny? Uh, swamps, marshes, I don't know the others. Partial points for you both. The five types are bogs, marshes, fens, swamps, and shallow water wetlands, which can be salty or fresh. <laughs> wetlands are also located along Canada's ocean coastlines. One more question. How much of the world's wetlands are in Canada? Well, Canada is pretty big and we have tons of water. I'll bet it's as much as 10%. Maybe more. Well, try 25%. You mean we've got one quarter of the planet's wetlands? Wow, so that means we have a big job caring for these areas. And here are a few ways you can help. Don't remove turtles, frogs, or other animals for pets. And keep your dog on a leash if you go for a walk near a wetland. Build and put up nest boxes to welcome more birds. Use lawn fertilizers wisely, since they can be washed into wetland areas. Tell your friends and neighbors about the importance of wetlands and the need to protect them. You can also visit Hinterland Who's Who online to learn more about Canada's wetlands. And to tell us about your ideas for protecting them. And remember, no matter where you live in Canada, wildlife is close by. So get out and see it. 